Hey there, movie buffs. Welcome back to Quinn's Movie Review Corner. If this is your first time, make sure to hit the subscribe button, like the video, comment a movie that you want me to review, because I've obviously got a lot. Some of these movies behind me, I have never seen before. So, I figured instead of reviewing a movie I've seen a thousand times, I would review a blind buy. Now, if you don't know what a blind buy is, a blind buy is a movie that you see that looks good, that you don't know anything about, you haven't read any review on, you haven't watched a, um, a trailer for it. Say you, you're looking at movies and you see, hey, Johnny Depp. I like Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp was really good in The Secret Window, Edward Scissorhands, Maybe I'll buy it just because he's in it and they can't make a bad film with him in it. Today, I am going to be reviewing the movie Trans America. Now, this is kind of funny. It's a little bit of a funny story here because I don't know where this came from. I assume that it was my wife, Stephanie's, contribution to this massive collection. She had never seen it before. She doesn't know where it came from, so I must have bought it thought, thinking that it would be a good movie. What I do know, however, is that it's from Orlo, Oro something, there's a receipt in here, Oro Valley, Arizona, and it was bought for $9.99 at Blockbuster when the Blockbuster was still there, apparently. I'm in Ohio, so I don't know how a movie got from Arizona to Ohio, and it was bought in 2007, which is kind of funny that they kept the receipt in, in the movie. And then the second-hand store where I got it also kept the receipt in the movie, which is really funny. Starring in the film is Felicity Hoffman. Um, she was in Christmas with the Cranks and Raising Helen. That, those are the ones that I know her from. Well, it's Christmas time, so I figured I would wear my ugly Christmas sweater today. Also starring is Kevin Zegras. He's mostly known for his childhood acting, and he was actually in the Magic School Bus from 1994 to 1997. I remember growing up with that on the, in the background all the time. Now, how I recognize an actor or actress is what have I seen them on? So, when I saw the psychologist on this movie, I didn't realize that her name was Elizabeth Pena. I recognized her as the lady from... Uh, batteries not included, which I will be reviewing on this channel at one point. So before we get into the movie, this movie is about a trans male to female or MTF person. I've not always been educated on the trans community. Okay, here's a little bit of a story time. I was watching a lot of reaction channels, and the YouTube algorithm brought me Roly. He is an amazing comedian. Um, reacts to piercing videos, and I don't have any piercings, and I watch him all the time. So he was watching, or he was reacting to five minute hacks for um, piercings. And so me and my wife was were just in, enjoying his content. We started binging his content, and then he had he has different people on his as like guests. And one time he had this guy named Jamie Dodger. At first, I assumed that Jamie Dodger was a cis man, which is like me. I'm a cis man. I I was assigned male at birth. I live as a male. That's what a cis man is. I didn't even know that term before watching Jamie's content. So, I assumed he was just a guy. Something, so, Somebody said something about him being trans, and my wife didn't even believe it. I had to rewind the video. And so then we started watching Jamie's content. And that's when I started learning different things, like male to female, female to male, packers... Those are male genitalia for female to male look. So shout out to Jamie Dodger. Um, I appreciate the teaching and I love to learn. So it, it it's uh, and I love to laugh and you're definitely a great comedian as well. I'm very glad that I learned 
everything that I have learned from Jamie Dodger and Rolly before watching this movie. If I had watched this movie a year ago, it would not have affected me the same way it has now. So there, if, if you haven't watched the movie, there are a couple things that I should probably prepare you for, just in case you go in it blind like I did. So there are quite a bit of full-on, full-frontal male nudity on this movie, and one gay sex scene. So on to the movie. Oh, Cree is a male-to-female trans person transitioning in their final stages of the transition. Before she can get bottom surgery, she has to go through two stages of psychological testing or screening or whatever you want to call it. So that basically it makes sure that she's actually ready for what her new life is going to be like. So she gets a phone call for Stanley. Now, Stanley was her dead name. Meaning, that was her name before she transitioned into a woman. And she changed her, changed her name to Brie. So the phone call was from the New York Juvenile Detention Facility basically saying that Stanley has a son that needs to be bailed out of Juvie. Now, she goes to the psychologist, Elizabeth Pena... And she says, I got a call from Sta for Stanley last night. And the psychologist says, no third person. So that was kind of interesting. So going into the meeting, the psychologist is going to sign a paper saying that Brie is ready for her final transition into a woman. However, the psychologist is a little bit weary of signing the paper or giving the paper to the people whoever needs to be given it to um because she's Bree is basically killing off every aspect of stanley the question is how the answer is they she um Bree had a lesbian affair with a girl in college. The girl got pregnant. She raised Toby, the son, and she ended up passing away. And then Toby is in juvie in New York. So, Brie goes to New York, bails out her son for one dollar, and he assumes that she is like a church person that's trying to save him from what he went to jail for, which is basically, um, he was a gay escort. So, as in improv, she goes with it. She is actually, this movie is actually quite funny. Um, so she goes to his house, or his, his room that he shares with three different people, and he says that he's going to be hitchhiking to Los Angeles to be in some gay adult films. Bree doesn't want him to hitchhike because obviously that's dangerous. So she decides they are going to drive together to Los Angeles, or so he thinks. So she decides to, instead of driving from New York to Los Angeles, she decides to do a windy trip through almost close to his hometown. He does not want to go to his hometown. She, re um, his mom married a man, his stepdad, and they didn't get along. So Bree thinks that by bringing him home to his stepfather, that she was going to leave and that was going to be it. She wasn't going to be a mother, she wasn't going to be anything to him because he would be with his family. She was mistaken. Because when they did get home, the dad, the stepdad walks in, hugs him, and then they, then you, you start to realize that the step, 
dad was a predator. So they fought. And the um, lady that they were talking to, his neighbor, smacks his stepdad over the head with a box. And he passes out. It reminded me of that Raising Hope where, where the mom keeps hitting people over the head with a television. So they leave the town. And Toby wants to spend the night outside instead of go to a motel room. So she doesn't like that idea because, you know, there's snakes and things and whatnot. So she watch, Toby watches as she takes her vitamins, her hormones. She doesn't tell him that yet. So she says that it makes her go number one. That's what she, that's how she puts it. So as she's saying this and she's like, I'm, I'm going to go to the little lady's room out in the middle of nowhere. I'm thinking, okay, there's going to be a time when he catches her going to the bathroom that is going to out her. And this is not the part. I was thinking Mrs. Doubtfire when the son finds out his dad is Mrs. Doubtfire. Not here that she gets outed with the bathroom mishap. But she does. Um, I think it's the next day. It's the day after. Um, they go to a Dallas to go and shack up with this uh, other person's house. That's a friend of a friend of a friend. And she's also trans. But she's not hiding in her own home. So she has a trans party. And so Bree is freaking out that, you know... Toby's gonna think, Toby's gonna realize that she's actually trans. The next night, she has to use the bathroom. She pulls over, he pulls over, and she squats behind the car, as women do. She sees a car behind her, coming up. She gets freaked out, panics, goes to the side of the car, and pees standing up because she's, she already walked. So... Then Toby realizes, oh, those those brights for real, those lights are really bright. So he moves the rear view just perfect to see everything, and it shows everything. The movie shows everything. It's it's a very to me, it's a very funny. Scene. He is freaked out. He doesn't talk to her for the for that night or the morning after until they get to a little shop, outdoor shop. Uh, so they have Native American artifacts, and he's really, really rude to her. So the clerk says, you be nice to your mother. And Toby freaks out and outs her, saying that she's not a woman, she has a penis, things like that. So Bree is driving. He's in the back seat. He wants her to drop, her off, drop him off in the next town. And then he starts asking questions like, did they cut your penis off? And she said, no, that's not what they do. And this is what made it, it kind of interesting to me, because I had no idea. I don't know what they do in bottom surgery. She said they make it an any and not an Audi. So then a hitchhiker just pops in the window and says, can I have a ride? Probably about the same age as Toby. She says no, but Toby says, yeah, get in. We all like to help people. So, um, then he outs her to the hitchhiker as well, who's a vegan, that doesn't really matter, but he says he's a fourth level vegan, which, he, he said he won't eat anything that casts a shadow, I don't know if that's true or not, but that's pretty funny. So, he says to Toby, you know, something, like, something about, um, he approves of trans people and it kind of maybe that's what starts getting Toby to thinking so anyways they they get they find a pond and they go skinny dipping obviously not Bree because she's not comfortable in her own skin yet so while Bree is sitting on a rock watching Toby swim around the hitchhiker says, I forgot something in my bag, and steals their car. So they have to hitchhike, which they didn't want to do in the first place. And they end up at Bree's parents' house. Now, through the, throughout the whole movie, including her psychologist, 
she told everybody her family's dead. Her parents are dead. She told that to Toby. And Toby goes, I thought you said your parents were dead. And she goes, wishful thinking. So enter her mother, who is played by Fionola Flanagan. Um, correct me if I'm saying that wrong. But she's uh, the older lady on The Others. Dad, Burt Young, who plays Polly in the Rocky series. So the mother is the stereotypical boomer character who takes everything that the child is doing and makes it all about themselves. So say, uh, say a child is changing, or a person, sorry, person is changing the way that they, changing their outside to match their inside. It's all about them. One of my favorite lines in this exchange is Bree saying, you ne you never had a son. And the mom reacting like she'd been shot and say, why would you say something like that about me? It wasn't about her, the mom. It was about Bree. <laughs> something kind of funny. So right when she said that, why would you say something like that about me? I actually said, because it's true. So, I'm starting to look, you know, I, I really enjoyed the movie. Um, the dad is more the sweetheart guy who kind of is understanding, but also is taking his wife's side, so he's kind of a jerk as well. So, like, one of his lines was, why are you all, why do you always have to make your mother upset? By being yourself. <laughs> she convinces her parents and her sister not to reveal that Bree is actually Toby's other mother. Which is a little bit of a mistake because Toby comes in really, really late into her room and tries to seduce her. That forces her to show Toby who she actually is. Toby gets upset, runs away, and she calls the police, and it basically goes to her bottom surgery, which is like the next day or something like that. And after she has it, the psychologist shows up, and I think it was probably supposed to be because of the meds, but when she cries, she drools a l like like buckets of drool, and it's it it that part. That's the only part that grossed me out of the whole movie was her drooling. So it shows uh, Toby is uh, actually what he wanted to be, the adult film star. Um, so Toby shows up at Bree's house one day, and. She convinces him to stay, and that's the movie. Like I said before, if I had not known about the trans community and the different things, aspects of it, I would have not enjoyed the film as much as I did watching it now.